Hi, my name is Josephine. I'm the co-founder of Dead Care Packages. Dead Care Packages send essentials such as PPE and care packs to vulnerable people and the NHS across London. I'm Steph. Um, I manage our warehouse, um, so where we send out all of the care packages um, and PPE from. And it's really exciting for me to work on this project because I just graduated um, from a master's program in social innovation and entrepreneurship at LSE. Um, this past December. So it's been really exciting to put um, like the skills that I learned directly into this experience since we are working on a social enterprise. The idea of Dental Care Packages is really simple. We want to target people who are in need and respond accordingly through like our networks of uh, social enterprises and uh, our personal networks to basically support each other during this very challenging time. Um, personally, my personal motivation of starting is because I am uh, immunocompromised and uh, as the lockdown began, I felt very scared because um, there are so many things that come at you very suddenly and you don't know how to like maintain a normal life and like, how to do very simple things like going out and getting resources. What we do is quite special in the case that we were able to target people who usually slip through the cracks, so people like refugees and vulnerable women who changes their addresses. Uh, people like ex-offenders, uh, people who are vulnerable in their own way, people who are immunocompromised who don't qualify for emergency impacts like myself, uh, who still feel the pressure of the lockdown. And so I gather my friends and uh, we're like, well, we're all social entrepreneurs. We all did social innovation and it is kind of our job to like try to think of solutions when times are really tough. So this is now one of the biggest challenges we face. So I think it's a natural progression for us to think of ways to respond to it. We've now, what, delivered over... 20,000 meals. 20,000 meals and how much? And 25,000 PPE. P yeah, PPE. Um, and I think just, so I, like I mentioned, I'm at the warehouse, so I'm responsible for working with volunteers to make the care packages, to make cards um, and personalize each of the care packages that go out to families um, or all different people. Um, and it's just really exciting to see how this has started from the ground up. Um, and now we're doing... We're sending out 200 packages a week. And it's been crazy. Like, the journey has been crazy. Like, with especially with the PPE stuff, it's like, apparently we're the only organization in the UK who is collecting all these data about, like, people's requests and, like, doctor's requests and nurses' requests. And these are now going to be used to, like, inform the MPs. We have, like, a briefing with the MPs to inform, like, BBC as they write the report. And now, like, being applied in a more global, like, manner. So, uh, I think that's really quite incredible. We were social entrepreneurs and uh, were able to leverage a lot of like different techs in order to make it a very efficient machine. And um, they, for example, we optimize all routes for our volunteers so that uh, we can use the least amount of drivers to reach the most places in a short amount of time. We're able to uh, leverage things like management software so that we can like have all the data in one place and all the information in one place that everyone can like readily accessible and can be updated in real time. Uh, I think it also helped a lot with like transparency. I feel like a lot of times when you're doing a project like this, transparency is like a real problem in the sense of like where the money is coming from, how much we're spending, and just basically being like responsible to the people that we're helping and the people who are donating to us. And we're able to do it in a very transparent ways because we have all the skill set um, as a social entrepreneur, as someone who is very interested in tech to uh, make it possible. And I think the other piece that is what really has been making this so successful is the volunteers. Mm. Um, it's been so inspiring just to see how many people and how enthusiastic people are who come to volunteer. Um, so our weekly cycle for the care packs is um, every Wednesday we get a big giant delivery from various organizations of product donations or prepared meals from some of the best restaurants in London. Um, we get shots of healthy juices with key vitamins that people need. Um, and then we also order using some of the money that we've been able to fundraise um, to fill in the gaps from our donations. And then we have volunteers who come in and help us sanitize all of the products, yeah. spending a couple hours actually doing that. Um, and then on Thursdays, we package all of the care packs um, with lots of love and personalization. And then Friday and Saturday is when they go out. Um, yeah, and Josephine's going to show an example of how we decorate the bags that we put everything inside. Yeah. Um, and I think just in general, like, 
So we have only a couple volunteers coming in at a time because we need to make sure that we are social distancing. Um, but it's just so incredible seeing families coming in to volunteer together. It's just, just really interesting that like in times like this where it's really trying, people really try to be like the best self and like to trickle mm -hmm. down the kindness wherever they can. I think COVID-19 has hit us like a, a, a ton of breaks where uh, the situation changes almost like by the hour like there's a lot of because like there's so much like new regulations coming out uh, and then like the lockdown changes week by week so uh, it has been very challenging uh, for us to basically keep up with all the different uh, regulations to ensure that our beneficiaries are still um, you know being taken care of at the end of the day um, but I think it's a good challenge because it, ma it makes us like you know think on our feet and uh, we need to be very flexible to cater to these things and I feel like a lot of it you know applies to like working in a startup or like working in like a, a fast-growing business where um, you know you just have to deal with challenges as they come and you need to be as flexible and as creative as you can when these like challenges arises. I feel like this COVID-19 is gonna have a long-lasting effect on our economy and uh, there will always be people who are in need of a little bit of love and a lot of support. So I feel like there's value in what we're doing. We've really hit the mind in like a, a soft spot in a lot of people to show kindness. So um, I think uh, what we're gonna try to do is to understand the challenges of the people we're servicing like at COVID-19 and beyond and to be able to like continuing like fueling the kindness of people and deliver to all these people. And uh, it could be in, in the space of programs, it could be in the space of like improved care packs. It will really truly depends on the needs of people. And I think that's kind of like what we've learned from dedicated care packages mm -hmm. is that we're trying to like cater to a problem instead of like trying to impose our vision onto someone. Exactly. Yeah. Even just seeing like in terms of how we've been um, donating PPE, um, we saw that there was a huge need in Nepal. Um, so we were able to donate thousands of surgical visors to Nepal. So um, I just think they're, like Josephine's saying, I think there's just, um, this problem has so many ripple effects. So kind of just looking at mm -hmm. where the need lies. I think it's really just listening to what the needs are mm -hmm. and being in a position to have the right tech, technological tools set up um, to be able to provide um, the best help that you can. Having the right team, knowing how to delegate, yeah. that's very important. I think like one advice that uh, we've been exploring is how um, I think a lot of people want to start something at the perfect start and mm -hmm. I think that's like a that's that's a fallacy. fallacy. Uh, you need to just start doing something. You know most business start because you take the first step even though that step can look very babyish in retrospect but like it's usually a snowball effect rather than like today I am sitting here the next day I have a business. Thank you. Thanks. Check us out. DareToCarePackages.com. Sign up to volunteer. Bye. <laughs>